Hey wizard, I know a lot of wizards are looking for a status update on how's it going integrating the Binance Smart Chain onto the Flash Gap Flash Loan no code arbitrage tool at CryptoWizards.net. As you can see right now, we have this working for Ethereum where it's racing through looking for as many arbitrage opportunities as possible. It simulates them. And then at the platform you can test is the calculation still profitable and it simulates them before it shows them on the platform to say, Hey, I actually simulated this, I forked the main net. I'd seen a real arbitrage opportunity. It might still be there. And so basically this is a tool that a minority of wizards actually use and ask for and continue to ask for today on Ethereum. But I also get a lot of emails saying, when am I going to get this for Binance smart chain? So as you know, there has been a lot of work happening in the background to try and replicate this for Binance Smart Chain. Now, before continuing, for me personally, as being the lead developer of this tool, I don't think this is profitable at all. I think that more often than not, the gas fees make it not viable to trade. And I know there are people who disagree with me on that and who continue to ask for this tool and I will continue to run a full node on Ethereum with this algorithm running to find those opportunities for you. But I just want to be very clear to those of you who might not be members and are thinking, oh, what's this? Maybe I should sign up for this. Do not do that. It's not worth signing up for, in my opinion. I will not be taking the tool down. It's valuable to a small group, minority group of people. Getting back to the topic at hand, when you look at the Binance Smart Chain, you'll know that PancakeSwap V3 and PancakeSwap V2 by far have the most trading volume. You can see it here on CoinMarketCap. There are two things that matter greatly when it comes to arbitrage, especially arbitrage on the blockchain, search and execution. Let's talk first about execution. You'll see here that I have a flash loan smart contract. Don't worry if you're not a programmer, you don't need to be for this. What this flash loan smart contract does is it takes in a request from a trader. It gets told what coins to trade and it gets told what exchanges to trade them on between PancakeSwap V2 and PancakeSwap V3. All the trades could be on one. So being a triangular arbitrage opportunity on one exchange, all the trades could be on another or it could be a mixture of the two exchanges. And this smart contract does the execution. It's a smart contract that is live on mainnet. You can send a flash loan smart contract trade to. Now, let me actually show you this working over here. When I go and fork the mainnet and I run the test over here, you'll see it actually successfully goes and trades this flash loan over here. So it deploys the smart contract. Essentially what's happened here when I went NPX hard hat test, what that does is it actually forks the mainnet because I've set the configuration up to do so when I put in NPX hard hat test. So it forks the mainnet. It deploys this flash loan smart contract onto that mainnet for me and it performs a flash loan arbitrage transaction successfully. So when you get this tick at the end here and it says should perform a flash loan using Uniswap V3, it actually means PancakeSwap V3, but essentially that has worked, but I've cheated. And the reason I've cheated here is you will also note that over here I'm paying a 20 USDT or BUSD value onto the smart contract before I do the flash loan because the tokens I'm looking at, in this case PancakeSwap and WBNB, might not have a profitable swap. And so to know if the flash loan smart contract will actually pay you back, what you do is just pay some money onto it first when you're developing. Makes sense. But in a real world scenario, I would set this to zero. And when I set this to zero, it means I'm not paying anything onto the smart contract. And therefore this arbitrage opportunity has to be 100% profitable. In other words, it has to have profit to pay me back. If it doesn't, it's gonna fail. So let's put this to zero, run this again and see what happens. So again, it's deploying this onto a fork mainnet and it fails. If you see a lot of red writing, you will see this fails and it says cannot estimate gas. You, you can ignore that, by the way, if you are a developer, it's just really frustrating. The debugging on Solidity is awful. But what it says here is BEP20 transfer amount exceeds balance. 
meaning I'm trying to pay myself money from the smart contract that isn't there. If I go back to the smart contract and I look down here at the code, what it does is it first pays back the flash loan plus the fee of the flash loan, because that's how flash loans work. You borrow any amount of money you want pretty much, plus a fee. As long as you pay those two things back at the end of the transaction, then everything's fine. Or whenever in the transaction, everything's fine. But let's say I've gone and paid those two things back here, but the arbitrage opportunity wasn't profitable. When it gets to here, this line of code is trying to pay me the profit. Well, there is no profit because it wasn't profitable, so it fails. And the same here, if it wasn't profitable, even enough to pay back the flash loan, it's gonna fail. So when you see all of this red writing here, where it says transfer amount exceeds balance, that basically means it's failed. For those of you who are coders, you might be wondering, why didn't I put a guard in there that would give me a more clear reason for why it's failed? Well, you can only put so much code in a contract and I've got a lot of code going on here to make this as dynamic as possible. Long story short, the execution smart contract for flash loan arbitrage on Binance Smart Chain works. If you have a profitable arbitrage opportunity, it works. But that brings me to point number two, the search algorithm. Here is a custom script I've written to search for profitable arbitrage opportunities using PancakeSwap. And let's go and run that. Now, if it finds a profitable arbitrage opportunity here for you and I, for the purposes of this video, it will stop running. So if you see this thing continuing to run, it means that all of these potential profitable pairs that it's testing and simulating flash loans for are failing, meaning they're not profitable. And I first wrote this in Rust and I was just getting a response of lots of potential pro profitable arbitrage opportunities. So if I was just, for example, showing signals like, oh, I did a calculation, this looks profitable, then this would work great because it's finding loads of them. But when it comes to testing them, they are not profitable end to end. They're not making any money. I've tested this using two different algorithms. One I wrote in Rust, another one I've written here using Node or TypeScript. And both attack from two different angles are showing me that there's no profit. And this is an even more robust version of code than what I used for the Ethereum flash gap, which is working perfectly. So as you can see here, as I've been talking, it still has not found even one potential trade, despite gas fees, it's not found even one. And my theory for that is that because the gas is so much lower, obviously the demand is so much higher because the risk to you as a trader is a lot lower. So the competition is much, much higher. And I hope some of you watching this have excellent search algorithms that are working for you where you're making bank. That would be fantastic. I don't have one. I do not have one working now for the Binance Smart Chain. And so with that said, we have to decide, do we have a go or a no go for the flash gap flash loan arbitrage tool when it comes to Binance Smart Chain? And the answer to that is we have a no go. This simply does not provide any value in terms of the search algorithm finding profitable arbitrage opportunities. Heck, I'm not even running a full node on the Binance Smart Chain because now it just costs so much and I'm getting zero value out of it. I'm still running the full node for Ethereum and that's actually the engine that's running the fines for the Ethereum flash gap opportunities that we talked about here earlier on the platform. So that's still running. But when it comes to the Binance Smart Chain to be able to trade against PancakeSwap and PancakeSwap V3, that is a no-go. And therefore I will not be putting that tool up right now. I recognize that having a smart contract that can successfully perform flash loan execution on Binance Smart Chain is useful to people. And instead of doing a whole Udemy course on how that works, I'm actually going to do a series here on the Code Raiders YouTube channel, which is the coding arm of Crypto Wizards really. It's here for those of you who want to see more of the code and the development. And so I'm going to be doing some development over there, showing you how to build this flash loan smart contract. And of course the code package, for those of you who are wizards, you will already have that. I'll put it up 
to the Code Raiders site. But I'm going to be walking through that line by line and showing you how to get a flash loan smart contract fully working. In terms of the search algorithm, maybe, maybe not. I don't think it's valuable. You let me know in the comments whether you want the search algorithm as well. I will also be looking to develop desktop applications that you can download. For example, a potential search algorithm that although it may not be profitable for everyone to use on a platform like crypto wizards like this, it might be profitable for a certain person to put in an input for specifically what they want and just let it run and find things for them just separately and individually on their own machine. So these are the sort of ideas for things that I'm looking to work on. The other good news is there's been a lot of work going on for months around Z-score and statistical arbitrage. A professional trader had sent me some information. I looked deep into it. I went deep into the math as well. And I was able to put together some really advanced stuff to greatly improve the performance of statistical arbitrage for the Z-score tool. So I'm gonna be definitely doing updates to the platform for that as well. And that really is proving to have a lot more alpha in it. I also understand that this is somewhat disappointing news for a number of traders out there. I am sorry for that, but we need to carry on. We need to soldier on and we need to continue hunting for alpha. And if we don't find it, we can't include it. So until the next one, take care and talk soon.